What makes a house haunted? We've all seen haunted houses, or heard about them as we've ridden past. I grew up in a haunted house. They're not rare, and it's usually not true. But what is it that makes a house truly haunted? Usually, they look abandoned, paint peeling away, tawny reeds growing so tall they threaten to swallow the house. If particularly picturesque, maybe the windows are shattered and blind, and a derelict fence is rusted closed, simply to make the prospect of visiting even more enticing. But a house isn't haunted simply because it's empty and unkempt. Weeds can grow anywhere. Hinges can creak on any door. If nobody lives there, does that mean it is not made for the living? We expect certain things, a checklist, experiences that cannot be explained, all which point to a haunting. Each night, a breath tickles your neck at dinner, and there's a strange movement in your mouth with each bite of food. Perhaps a curio or item we trusted betrays us. A typewriter that offsets certain letters to spell out the way you will die. A bed with sheets that wait until you fall asleep to throttle you. A fountain you see out of the corner of your eye, dripping red. Is that evidence of a haunted house? Are they individual objects, each with a spirit destined to terrify? Is it something contained? A single room which makes your ears ring and your teeth itch. Yet, that has much to do with imagination. In that which we cannot see or understand, we will create meaning. We tell our stories over cocktails or campfires. But what exactly did we see? What can we blame? Is it a ghost? A monster? The house I was in was always haunted on Halloween night. My father loved it, encouraged it. I was so scared. We would dress in our costumes with our special bags tied with yarn, not looking in mirrors for fear of who we might see. We would try to escape early, but We knew when we returned that night, something else would be there. The sun would set, and I could smell it in the air, hiding in fireplace smoke and lurking fog. Suddenly, I heard the wind that came from nowhere, and I knew it was time. That house was not scary to look at on an ordinary day. You could hardly tell anything frightful was in it. Yet abhorrence hides in banality. A house cannot, could not be haunted if it's new enough, we tell ourselves. There aren't enough bats in the belfry or bones in the basement. Nothing stalks beneath the refinished floorboards, slipping between the double panes of the windows to follow your movements. If you paint over the horror, it might go away for good. Cast it off with burning sage smudged in a dark corner. Or a visit from the clergy to reaffirm piety. A spirit medium to converse with the walls themselves. Drowning out the discomfort in music and laughter in a bottle. On a sunny day, you're so sure the crackle of meat on the grill is not your own flesh. It seems too innocent too young to be hostile. These things blossom with age, they crystallize. A palace of misfortune must be built stone by stone. Child disappearances, fingers with sutures and twelve knuckles in the name of medical science, pets disemboweled by slavering vermin, atrocities, murders, with enough square footage to shelter beings that should never have entered, and indeed, never left. 
Perhaps it is an unnamed aura, unfettered malevolence. No origin, no end. A heaviness in your lungs, a lightness in your head. Each fingernail pulsing, your veins trying to rip themselves open. How does a house become this? How does it contain this rancor? Does malice seep into the walls or radiate out? Is it made or does it make? It's all the wrong questions. Flawed expectations. It is the ruin of so many. I've seen it. It's not about what's in the house. It can be who. My house was haunted because I was there.